Hey everyone, today I want to talk a little explicitly about plot before we get into the next lessons and make sure we have a good grasp of what plot means and what all is included in that. Uh, what you'll see over here on the left are some terms you really need to know uh, before you get into any kind of plot analysis. All right. Plot, in a, in a very simple way, is just what happens in a book. If, if setting is where and when and character is who, plot is the what. The what happens. Um, and it, it'll carry through several stages. Uh, exposition, rising action, climax, falling action, and resolution. You probably remember these stages from middle school. I want to dig a little deeper into them and make sure you understand how these stages interact uh, and which ones are actually necessary because a short story is not going to hit all of this stuff. You know, a movie, we, even not a movie, a full novel will have all of these. A movie will have four, maybe all five of them. Some of them aren't entirely necessary though. We'll talk about uh, what they do and when they are necessary. You probably in middle school saw the, uh, the little, uh, they call it a free tag diagram or a plot diagram um, for helping to analyze plot. And it's a good, it's a good image to use uh, and we'll get into details of what this, this plot mountain means uh, as we're breaking these down. So the first one is exposition. Exposition is this beginning part of the story. Uh, and in the exposition, we are introduced to the setting and we're introduced to the main characters. We may not meet all the characters, but the main ones should be introduced there. Uh, there should not be any conflict in the exposition, and that's the important part. It is just to expose uh, the basics of the story, the who and the where. Uh, and sort of get you get you grounded in the story before we get into any conflict. The second conflict happens, the very first moment where we see conflict in the story, that's called the inciting incident. That is the incident that incited the conflict. Uh, and once you see that inciting incident, where you're in the rising action. All right. So rising action is, is the the main conflict of the story, where we see a, a lot of the tension developing. Um, all that, that excitement, uh, we see the, the back and forth, forth between the, the main hero and the main villain. It, it's all growing throughout the rising action. Um, all of that, that's right, that right there, that, that moment when we stop the exposition and go into the rising action, is, it's called the inciting incident. And it's just a single moment in the story. Just like this moment right here. This is the climax. Now, I've seen a lot of teachers talk about the climax being the most exciting part of a story, and to me it never is. Like, the, it's usually the most exciting part is over here. Um, and Rocky, uh, the character is, you know, he's training, he's getting, you know, building up his muscles, he's getting, you know, into the routine, he's learning about his, his opponents and all that. That's all rising action. But then I think it's Rocky II, where you're shooting the big giant Russian guy. Um, I get all my Rocky movies mixed up, who cares, they're from the 80s. Um, but he's fighting this big Russian guy, and he finally gets to that big fight uh, that everybody's been waiting for. That big fight is not the climax, all right? Uh, it's not about the entire fight, because that fight's like, it's a, that's a big chunk of the movie. It was, it was several minutes long. And the climax is when uh, he finally gets knocked down, and the, the, the big guy, the Russian guy, he just wells on him and knocks him out. He goes down to the mat like he's out. Um, here's Sylvester Stone laying down on the mat, and you're, you are know, you can hear in the distance sort of muted, the, the ref is counting. Uh, and then he looks over, and his wife, Adrian, she comes in. She wasn't all, all about all this fighting, but she comes in, and she's standing there at the very back of the crowd, and he sees her, and you see, you see Sylvester Stallone make eye contact with, you know, Rocky's wife and everything, and you're like, oh, no. He's going to get up for her. That moment, that one second where that's that moment of realization, we know that Rocky's going to win. You know now, oh, he saw his wife, he's gonna get up and he's gonna be tough. And he gets up and it's like he's gone Super Saiyan and he comes back and he wails on the guy. Um, that moment where he saw his wife, that was the climax. And it, it's here that you see a turn in the line because that's the, it's a turning point in the conflict. It's just that one moment where we think we see things are gonna change. In, a, in one of the Shrek movies, I think he was literally in the bathroom and he's like, oh my God, I love Fiona. You know, he had given up, he had abandoned the whole thing, he'd gotten everybody out of the swamp. He got what he wanted, or at least what he thought he wanted, back here in the inciting incident. So he should see an end to the conflict. But while he's sitting there on the toilet, he realizes that he loves her, and now he's got to run down and break up that wedding. And in that moment of realization, that's our climax. Now, all of the action that happens after that, that turning point is the falling action. Uh, it's falling because... The, the tension should be falling. The, the tension on, that is built up on our shoulders should be falling off at this point. Because you know how it's going to end. You know, we don't even, I guess we don't really need the falling action because you know what's going to happen. We know Rocky's going to win. We know Shrek's going to live happily ever after. 
Um, the fall in action is just uh, where we get to see that action play out. That's all. Uh, and then we have at the very end, the resolution. Uh, where things wrap up. There shouldn't be any conflict anymore in the resolution unless it's uh, hinting at future conflict for, you know, sequels or something like that. But this conflict is done and completely resolved and then we see the effects of how it was resolved. Um, sometimes people get fall in action and resolution mixed up because we are seeing in the fall in action the main character resolving this conflict. Resolution is really the effects of that, that resolution. Um, the, the French word, and they, they, we stopped using that in America for some reason, but the French word for it is denouement, which means the, the tying up of things. And that's a, actually a better name for resolution because we're not resolving the conflict, we're just tying up loose ends, right? Um, so let me talk about how these interact real quick. Uh, I've seen a lot of students, when they try to break down a story into these stages of plot, it's like they're all equal somehow, and Shakespeare totally makes this mistake. Shakespeare does his plays in five acts, and it's supposed to be one act for each stage, which doesn't make any sense. And that's why in some of Shakespeare's plays, like the fourth act, the, the fall of action is like, let's come on, let's just move, move it along. Um, if you were to make them all equal, then you'd end up with, you know, an equal amount of everything. You'd have, you know, if it was a movie, you'd have I don't know, 15 minutes of exposition and 15 minutes of rising action and 15 minutes of climax and 15 minutes of fallout action and 15 minutes of resolution. And that's not the way it works out. If you were to really like graph a movie, like a legit movie that hits all of them, it's like this, a little bit of exposition and a crap ton of rising action and then a few scenes of fallout action and a little bit of exposition. Because the bulk of any story, any good story, should be the conflict, right? The, the building of tension. Fall in action is huge. And everything else, I'm sorry, not fall in action, rise in action is huge. And everything else is really about making that rise in action valuable. Um, exposition is sometimes it's just a couple of minutes. Climax is just a single little moment, it's just one point. Um, fall in action is, it can be a big chunk of it if there's a lot of you know, fight scenes that you gotta run through. Um, but the bulk of any story is gonna be the rise in action. So if you were to do a plot synopsis, a plot synopsis is when you write a summary of the plot, you're going to focus mostly on rising action, okay? You'll tell how things got started, but then you need to talk about how the conflict got started and focus on all the stages. I mean, there, there, there will be several scenes, and all these scenes in here are things that build that conflict that, and that tension. Rising action is like building blocks, you know? I'll lay all of my first building block down. Here's my inciting incident. A little bit of tension. One building block's probably not gonna fall over though. And then I'm gonna have another scene here, another scene here, and another scene. And now it starts getting wobbly, right? There's so much tension build up. So many scenes that have made the, the conflict more tense for that main character that now my tower's getting wobbly. And that climax, that's the block that makes it all fall over, right? So as you're, as you're describing your rising action, you should be thinking about the things that create more tension for the audience and for the main character. Things that create more pressure, that make the obstacles even bigger uh, as you move through that story, okay? I could really, I put conflict right beside rising action because that's where we see the conflict begin. But really, this is the conflict of the story. It's in those stages. Oh my God, let's put conflict on. Crazy. Um, those are the, the stages that build the conflict of the story. So we're going to look at which ones are actually necessary. I don't need the exposition. The, I don't need to meet the setting characters before I get into conflict. I can just jump into the action, right? And meet the characters, you know, as we're going through the, the, the action of it. Well, I can have the, the first scene be the inciting incident where we first see the drama building. Um, it, especially if it's a really basic, you know, re relatable story. If it's very, you know, if it's real life, then I don't need a, a whole lot of explanation. Um, Star Wars, uh, Avengers, things that have a lot of fantasy to them. Uh, Harry Potter, a whole chapter of exposition because you need some time to get familiar with the setting before you find out, okay, let's see what conflict we're going to deal with. Um, and these two stages down here, Fall in Action and Resolution, You'll see a lot of short stories, movies even, that'll leave you sort of hanging. We'll get to a climax, and then we're gonna stop right there. We're gonna let you see things start to fall, and then the book just ends and leaves you hanging. And that's called a cliffhanger, because look, 
you're out on the edge of a cliff about to fall over. Um, and that's what makes you want more. Um, you see it a lot in short stories, especially any short stories we're going to be doing in this class. Um, they're going to build you up, build you up, because the main part of the story is that rise in action. That's where we learn about all the conflict and, and the themes of the story are going to be exposed generally in the rise in action and maybe in the climax. Um, beyond that, it's sort of just uh, for the, the, the reader, it's just enjoyment to get to see how it plays out. We certainly don't need it. All right. If you have any questions, send me a message and uh, let's get started working on plot.